So in this video, I'm going to cover two newly added features in the KME Smart IoT platform. So if you're a KME Smart Platform user, well, this video is definitely for you. And in case you haven't used the KME IoT platform yet, well, maybe these two new features will make you curious enough to get started with the KME Smart IoT platform. So let's just start with the first newly added feature called as subscribers. Well, this indeed is the most useful feature in an IoT platform, which is already available in the commercial IoT products, but I haven't seen this in the free available IoT platforms in the market. So first, let me explain the need of this feature. So for those who follow me must be knowing that we have our own studio here where we used to work on different, different projects. And for this studio, we used to hire new interns time by time and to control all the IoT based appliances, I can not give my account credentials to all the interns. So we a feature of sharing a studio control access to a person so that they can log in with their own account but can still control our own studio and we should also have a feature to remove the access whenever we want well that exactly what subscriber feature is in the KME smart IoT platform so now after knowing the need of the feature now let me show you how to use it but after a really short but informative ad break so this video is sponsored by LTM and we are all familiar with the secure collaborative design platform LTM365. But let me tell you one of its really interesting features. So with the integration of Silicon Expert, now you can visualize all the important parameters of the components all in one place. Let me show you a quick demo. In LTM365, just go to the manufacturing part search option. Here, you can search for any component you want to use. Just click on get data from silicon expert and it will pull all the crucial parameters of the components in one place. Below that you'll also see a suggestions for alternative components along with the ratings on how well each one suits a direct replacement. Pretty interesting right? And now if you're a student from India, well LTM has launched LTM Student Lab where you can sign up with your university email ID to get access to LTM 365 online courses and can even get certification directly from LTM. And this will definitely help your resume to stand out and will give you a great boost in your design career. Well, I'll be linking away all the important links down to the description, so be sure to check them out. Okay, so let's first start with installing the KME firmware into our ESP32 development board. For that, we'll go to the kmesmart.com website, click on KME config, and here we need to download the KME tools. Current version is v28. Uh, right now, it is only available for Windows system, so you need to have the Windows system to flash the firmware. After downloading, just open that file. I'll extract it. After that, I'll go inside that folder and open up this KME config app. Click on more info and click on run anyway. And here is the tool that will help us to flash the firmware. So first click here and here select the COM port on which you have connected your ESP board. In my case, it is COM3 and click on connect button. After connecting, you just need to click on upload firmware and this is the bestest part of KME. It will automatically detect which chipset is attached with it. Is it ESP32 or ESP266? After detecting, it will automatically flash the required firmware file into your board. As you can see, it already started flashing the firmware and within a couple of seconds, it will be successfully flashed. And the firmware is successfully flashed and here we also got the Mac ID and the device ID. Now we are good to go to configure it and for configuring, click on this plus icon. And here are all the widgets available that we can you know, configure it for our ESP32 board. For showing the demo, I'll simply use the relay or the digital out widget. And here I'll click on this to configure it. And let's try to turn on and off the LED attached to digital pin 13. And here we can also attach an input push button through which we can control that LED. So let's just connect that push button on GPIO 15, which is here. And that's pretty much it. You can click here. And now by just clicking the upload button, it will send all the configuration file into our ESP32 board. Okay, so here it says uploading done. And with this, we have completed all the steps to be performed for flashing the firmware and adding the configuration file. And now let's move on to our smartphone and let's try to connect the KME hardware, that's the ESP32 board with the KME smart mobile application. And later I'll show you how to add the subscriber in it. Okay, so on our smartphone, we first need to open up the KME Smart Mobile application, which is available for both Android and iOS. After that, click on the plus icon and click on add device. Here, provide the SID name and password of your Wi-Fi router, whose credential will be provided later into the ESP32 board to talk to internet. After that, just click on the connect button. And here we have two options to send the credential to our ESP32 board. One is via smart connect and one is via access point. This smart connect is a bit easier option, so we'll go for it. For that, we first need to press and hold the boot button till the onboard blue LED starts blinking at the interval of one second. 
as you can see it started blinking at the rate of one second and now it is in smart connect mode just click here and now it automatically find the nearby ESP32 device uh, with the key ME firmware and as you can see it automatically find, uh, found one device I'll click on add device uh, you can change the name if you want I'll keep it as it is and click on the save button and with this we successfully configured the ESP32 board with the key ME smart mobile application and now let's connect the LED and the button and let's test out this particular project Okay, so here I have connected the LED and the push button at the respective pins and now I can control the LED from the mobile application as you can see the latency is really very low. It's it's real time. It's almost real time. And I can also control that same LED with the help of the push button like I can turn it off from here. The feedback is reflected in the mobile application and I can turn it on as well from here and its feedback is reflected once again. So this is a project that we used to work uh, in the key ME smart IoT platform. But now if I want to give the access of this particular light to some other person with another email ID how we can do that let me show you that process first of all you need to go to my profile here into the settings icon here we'll see a new option called as subscribers and here let's click on share device and we here we only have one single device that is one socket so I'll click here and click on the save button now here we need to provide the email ID to which you want to give the access of this particular system so that's the Gmail ID to which I want to give the access of the system click on copy and save and this will add this email ID into subscriber. It will also copy one unique key or code into your clipboard, which you need to send to that particular person who will be controlling this this system. Okay, let me show you uh, in what format you get that particular key. So if I paste here, as you can see, this is the format of the a token or key anything you can say which you need to send it to the person with that same email ID which you have entered right now and then he can access this system so now let me show you how the person on the other side can access it with the help of this particular token okay so here is that other smartphone to which I want to give the access so I'll open the KME smart mobile application and here as you can see I'm logging with the same email ID to which the access is given now to add this particular device in my smartphone I need to go to my profile then settings here into the subscribers I need to click on from and here I need to paste that code which was generated here in this particular device so I'll paste it and click on the submit button as you can see it recognized it was from techiesmstudios at gmail.com and now the device is added so if I go to the dashboard like the home screen and I refresh this page as you can see I got the widget here with the help of which I can control this light let me show you so if I turn it off from here as you can see, turn it off from here as well and I turn it off here in the ESP32 as well. If I turn it off from here, as you can see, turned on, the feedback is also reflected. So all this is now in sync with each other and this is how you can give the access to other person to control or monitor your smart home devices configured with the key ME smart. And now in case you want to remove this access, you can go to my profile from this master device, go to this setting icon, go to the subscribers. And here inside the two option you will be see you have shared the access to the sony such in 915 at gmail.com and now if i click on the delete button the access is no longer given to this device so if i just kill this application and open it once again as you can see now it shows offline even though the device is online into the master uh, application i can still control it from here but from here it shows offline means this phone or this email ID has no longer access to this particular device. And that's how the subscriber feature works in KME Smart IoT platform. Isn't that a super useful feature? Well, I definitely think so. And this will definitely attract a lot of new users to start using KME Smart IoT platform. And anyways, let's move on to the next new feature, which is called as local automation, which is kind of automation that works without internet as well. For example, if you want to make an intruder alert system in which whenever the motion is detected, you want to turn on the buzzer and this should work regardless of internet connectivity. Well, in that scenario, this feature will be really very useful. So now let me show you how to use this feature. So to test the local automation feature, we first need to reconfigure this uh, KMA device. So I already connected my ESP32 board with my computer and here is the Mac ID and the device ID. Now here I'll click on the plus icon and I will add two widgets. One is the alarm sensor and other is the relay or the digital out. I'll configure the alarm at digital pin 5 itself, let's just leave it as it is and I'll configure this switch to be attached at digital pin 13 like the LED will be attached to the digital pin 13 and here I don't want to add any kind of input so I'll keep it none okay 
so simple an led at pin number 13 and a sensor at pin number 5 that's it now i just click on the upload button and within couple of seconds it will be successfully flashed into our esp board okay so here as you can see it says uploading done and with this we are done with adding the configuration file now let's move ahead and connect it with our mobile application so after flashing the firmware just open up the KME smart mobile application and once again we need to you know configure it the same way we did before so i click on add device uh, provide a say name and password of your Wi-Fi router click on connect and let's just make it to go inside the smart connect mode by pressing and holding the boot button until the uh, onboard blue already starts blinking at the interval of one second after that I'll click on Wi-Ax smart connect and now uh, it will automatically recognize the nearby KME based device so let's just wait for it as you can see the device appeared here click on add device and I'll keep the name as it is click on the save button and the device is successfully added now let me attach the required peripherals like the sensor and the LED with the board and let me show you how to do the local automation okay so here we have connected the LED and the sensor so now I can control the LED from the mobile application and also if I place any object near the sensor its status will be reflected onto the mobile application in almost real time so this is a complete working project and now let me show you how to do the automation for doing the automation you can go inside the device and then later you can click on the plus icon and first let's create a scenario uh, let me show you what scenario actually is so I'll go into scenarios and uh, let's just click on the blank scenario and here let's just give the scenario a name as LED blink so what is the scenario all about in scenario we can actually program our action for example in the normal automation what we can do is as soon as the object is detected we can turn on the LED we can turn on the buzzer but what if we want to blink the LED? What if we want to uh, turn an on and off the buzzer after particular delays? Okay, so how we can do that? Well, we can do all those kind of things using a scenario. For example, here I created the scenario name with LED blink. Now what I'll do, I'll click on add task. And here I'll select change switch state. Then here I only have one single switch. So I'll select this and I want to turn that switch on. After that, what I want to do is I want to add a delay. Delay of let's say two seconds. Click on save. After the delay, again I want to change the switch state to off. Okay. Again after that, I want to add the delay of two seconds. Okay. And here I can add way more lines as well. Let's just try to turn on the LED in the end. And that's it. So turn on the LED, delay, turn it off, delay and then turn it on again. So this is a scenario that we have created. We'll click on the save button. So with this, we have successfully created a scenario named as LED blink. Now we'll go back and here again, click on the plus icon. And now we can go to automations, click on plus. And here first we need to provide a condition. So I'll click on add scene, click on alarm sensor. And in case any object is detected, that's the condition. Now we need to add the action when this condition is satisfied. So click on add task and here I will add scenes. Uh, we can also add directly the switch like turn it on and turn it off. But here let's just go to scenes and add the scene called as LED blink and I will trigger the scene. So as soon as the sensor is detected, uh, the object is detected, we are uh, calling the LED blink function we can say. Click on the save button and the automation is turned on. So now if I bring uh, this object close to it, as you can see object is detected in the sensor, the LED turned on, turned off and it will turn it on again and the alarm is also detected. So the action was performed when the object is detected. Now this is happening when the internet is on. Now let me show you what happens when we turn off the internet. Let me just uh, turn it off right now. So as you can see the blue light got turned on which means now this device is no longer connected with the internet and now let's see if the automation still works or not so i'll bring the object close to the sensor the object is detected and now the led should get turned off yes it got turned off and it will turn on again so the automation is working locally inside this esp32 board and it works without internet as well which is truly amazing like your automation will run 24 by 7 regardless of any kind of internet connectivity and that was all about how to use the local automation in the kme smart iot application so that was all about two newly added features in the kme smart iot platform now do share your thoughts about this feature like which feature you found most useful and also if you have any suggestion about which feature need to be added next into the KME Smart IoT platform well you can also let us know down in the comments and we'll forward your request to the KME Smart IoT platform team and yes do subscribe our channel if you are interested in this IoT domain and love to explore new IoT platform and projects and yeah that being said I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video until then explore learn share with me
Thank you, SMS.